This video is brought to you by thepuzzler.com. Problem number 24 from the AMC 12B. The figure below has a regular 7 gun inscribed in a unit circle. What is the sum of the fourth powers of the lengths of all 21 of its edges and diagonals? First, I'm going to label the heptagon a bit. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, whenever you see a problem like this, you'll notice that a lot of the diagonals are going to be the same. In fact, all the edges are the same. So we're not actually going to find all 21 lengths. In fact, let's see how many we actually have to find. So we have this edge AB, and there's seven of those edges. So that's going to be, we have to find AB, so seven AB to the power of four. Um, then what else do we have? We have AC. So if I were just to write instead of seven AB, this, what, what do we need to find, right? What are the unique sides? So AB, and there's seven of those. Then the next type would be AC, and there's one of those from each point. So there's seven AC, and then something like AD, which is basically when you have two points in the middle and three points on the other side. So you also have one of those from each vertex. So that's going to give you seven AD. So the problem basically comes down to solve this problem for AD to the power of four, AC to the power of four, AD to the power of four. And then we can just multiply our answer by seven. Okay, well, how do we find something like, let, I don't know, let's say AB? Well, first we have a circle and we know that it's regular. So we know that the angle right here is two pi. So this angle right here is two pi over seven because it's split into seven sides. And we know that since it's a unit circle, if I call the center O, AO equals one and BO equals one. So that lets me use the law of cosine to solve this problem. If I'm using the law of cosines, what I get for each of the three sides is that AB squared equals this, AC squared equals two minus two cosine times, a cosine of four pi over seven, and then AD squared equals two minus two cosine six pi over seven. So if you're having trouble seeing where I came up with this, make sure you search up the law of cosines. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, we use that to find each of these expressions. Now we don't want the square, we want the fourth power. So let's square everything. And that would give us the expressions that we have right here. So once we square everything, we still have a lot of symbols that we can't really evaluate, right? Not even symbols like cosine two pi over seven, uh, we don't know what that is. Uh, we don't know what cosine squared 2 pi over 7 is. But we can use some identities to help us reduce this um, and make this easier to do. So the first identity we're going to use is cosine squared of 2 theta. So cosine squared of theta equals 1 plus cosine root theta over two. So you can see we use that here to come up with this part from this part. And we do the same thing for the other two to get similar expressions. Okay, so now this is much easier to deal with than what we originally had, but it's still not sufficient. So now we're gonna use the fact that we have this unit circle and we can take advantage of the roots of unity here. So if we have something like this, we have a unit circle. And then whenever you have an n-gon in here, uh, here we have a seven gon. We have seven roots of unity that we can use to help us evaluate these angles. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to notice a lot of symmetry. For example, if I scroll down a bit, we have that cosine of eight pi over seven is equal to cosine of six pi over seven. Uh, 8 pi over 7 is somewhere right here, and 6 pi over 7 is somewhere right here. So those two angles, when you're taking the cosine of them, those are the same because you're just reflecting it over the x-axis. And same thing with cosine of 12 pi over 7, which is equal to the cosine of 2 pi over 7. Remember, cosine doesn't change sign when you're flipping it over the x-axis. Okay, so this one's a bit more straightforward. Now this, this one's a bit more, it requires a bit more thought. So I'm saying that 
we have these three cosines, we can add them up and it equals negative one half. Now, I won't go into a complete proof of why that's the case here, but I would suggest trying to prove this on your own. The way we would prove something like this is we have that if we were to consider the seven sides of the heptagon as a seven root of unity, and we call this w, so then w to the power of seven equals one, so that w to the power of seven minus one equals zero. And now if you were to factor this, what you would get is something times something equals zero. And what are these something? So this first one is going to be w minus one, and this one is w to the power of six plus w to the power of five, w to the power of 4, all the way to plus 1. Now, obviously, since w is the seventh root of unity, w minus 1 is not 0. Um, so this has to be 0. And if this is 0, then we have that w to the power of 6 plus w to the power of 5 plus w to the power of 4. And all the way equals 0. So that this expression right here is going to equal, or this expression, not including, not including the plus one at the end, is going to equal negative one. Now use that to show why cosine two pi over seven, which is the squared, and then four pi over seven, which is this one, and six pi over seven equals negative one over two. And hint, you can use this right here to help you do that. Okay, so once we have that, it's just a bit of algebra. We add up everything. And what we're going to get is 12 minus 8 times negative 1 half plus 6 plus 2 times negative 1 half, which is going to give you your answer of 21. Now going back to the answer choices. We would multiply, like we said, 21 times 7, which would be 147, and we would be done. Now, for this problem, I would suggest going back, trying to go through all the algebra, especially the step where we convert. So the, this step right here and this step right here. Make sure these two make sense to you as to how we can use these to simplify the algebra. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked or enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a like and subscribe to our channel. For more amazing content, you can check out thepuzzler.com.